This channel is for educational purposes only. Please do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions. Hi, this is Joe Rabel with Invest Like a Pro. I'm going to give you a stock market update as of Thursday's close for Friday morning. One of the things I am going to focus in on when we get into the individual trends is explaining the difference between a sequential wave type of trend and a surging market trend. And I think it's important now because we've shifted time frames. The time frame you should be focusing on is different than what it has been. And I'm going to show you how and why uh, it's important and if we might need to shift one more time. Uh, let's go ahead and get going. Now, I am um, offering a new course probably in a couple weeks. It is going to be a part of the bundle that's in existence right now. But after that is released, the prices are going to change. And um, so if you have an interest, uh, you can certainly take a look at that now. Um, also, if you want to learn more just starting out, I would I would recommend the book. It's at rablestockresearch.com forward slash book uh, to get more information. OK, let's start out with the market conditions and the sentiment did shift a little bit back down, meaning we had 41% more bulls than bears last week and we dropped down to 37%. I'm not changing uh, this. I mean, we could shift it to the low end of this, but it's still in the range, uh, kind of the danger range. And I think you should still be thinking that we got a little excessive on the number of bulls versus the number of bears last week. Again, I am using the Investors Intelligence Sentiment uh, Survey of investment advisors, okay? And uh, it, it gives, and I've been using it for about 30 years. When this number gets up into the 35 to 45% range, we know we should be a little bit more uh, defensive. Um, and so as that part of the market conditions, I think is at a negative right now, um, the sentiment is. Now the overbought oversold oscillator, I'm gonna move this over a little bit so we can see, this is the RSI 5 here on the weekly S&P or the spider. It's up to 88% again. I mean, it can only go to 100 and uh, that's, that's up there. You can see the last time it was uh, up around, uh, it's actually made another new high. So we don't have divergence anymore. Uh, but with that said, it is it is at an extreme. And as the market approaches this 5,000 mark, it's getting closer and closer to 5,000. Um, and don't think it closed at 5,000 today uh, or uh, on Thursday. But at the same time, it's right there. And that, that should be a big, that, those big round numbers, guys, are, are really important to recognize uh, when we're getting close to them. They can be, especially when you're extended, they can act as resistance. Um, so we've got these two components of the market conditions right now in a negative format. That means we could get a pullback. Now, how important is that pullback? We want to look at the indicators above. And you can see that the trend and momentum are all still bullish right now. All right. And the volatility on the weekly is bullish. The only fly in the ointment we have really above this line here is the uh, daily is showing a little bit more volatility. I can show you how this is starting to dissipate now in a second. So let me go ahead and get into that. So if you notice the way this is played out, it, the weekly average true range continues to decline. It made one little pop and then it dropped right back down before the moving average, the 18 MA of the ATR was able to turn. And now they're both declining again. I mean, this is very bullish. This is positive. All right. This is when this is declining, that means we have a low volatility uptrend. That's that's kind of the best kind you're looking for. All right. Now we are overbought, but we're, we're in a situation where we're maybe looking for a pullback, but we wouldn't necessarily be looking for anything severe on this time frame. Now on this time frame, we've got a little bit more volatility. We've been working up and working down. This line is essentially flat right now based on the way it's registering on my system. And now we're back below it. So I kept it at neutral just because the moving average line isn't declining. It's flat. Uh, but the reality is, is that we would need this to come back up and take out these highs. You see how this keeps coming up to this area and failing? If we turn back up through that, then this turns negative. This goes from neutral to negative, and we should be on the lookout for probably a, an 18 MA break. And now maybe we actually get a full blown test of the 18 week again. All right, so we want to be on the lookout for increased volatility on this time frame, and that tells us there's more risk on this time frame. That doesn't necessarily convert to that there's going to be more risk on this time frame. Do you see what I mean? So we want to use 
So it's almost like, it's not exactly like this, but it's almost like if these lines are down like this, then you sort of assume that the 18 is going to provide support, but it's really more the 1840. That trend probably has pretty solid support underneath. Whereas if this were to break out, then we'd say, you know what, the 1840 are at more risk on this time frame. So you could be fine on one time frame and have more risk on the lower time frame. So we need to be aware of that. It affects the time frames you want to trade. If you're interested in swing trading, you'd be very uh, reluctant when uh, this line is trending to the upside above its moving average. Just briefly, if uh, you're enjoying the content, if you can hit that like button, I would uh, appreciate it. And also subscribe uh, so you can be alerted to any new uh, videos that are coming out. Still trying to grow the channel. About to hit that 5,000 subscriber mark. Um, it's been a slow process, but the feedback has been good. So I want to continue to grow this channel. Now, let's just start with the monthly real quick. Um, we are four months into a pinch play. All right, it's typically two to four bars. Now, if you notice, I mean, we had kind of a narrow body bar. It wasn't really a narrow range bar. But it was more like a narrow body, but we broke out from that and had a big green bar, and we've had three months of follow through. Good enough to get the MACD to make a new high, good enough to get green DI to break out above 25 and take out its prior peak, and, and actually get the ADX to start rising here. Now, this is not a powerful situation, not like back here where you're really moving. The ADX line has a lot of slope and a lot of strength. Um, we haven't really tested, green DI hasn't really tested yet or anything like that. So that's why I, I, you know, I look at this more like a single pinch play um, off the MACD and not really representative of the of a continuation signal. So I want you to understand this because if you have ADX showing strength and you get this pinch play, you can play the pinch play, but you're playing it as a part of a bigger trend. It just gives you another opportunity to enter at a better uh, at a. Um, get a better entry, right, in a bigger trend. In this case, I would just look at this as a solely as a pinch play uh, signal. Hopefully that makes sense. And if you go back through my courses, I go through this in depth. I do try and explain this uh, pretty well. Now, we've got uh, underlying backdrop is fine. It looks okay, but we are coming up against, um, we've taken out the high and we're coming up against a big round number on the S&P index itself at 5,000. But look at what the weekly is doing. So instead of moving up and pulling back and testing the 18 week, we are moving up and then getting one bar down and then we're going again. You see how this is, this is not coming back to test this line? So when you're in a, a sequential wave, let me just draw this out so you can see. A sequential wave will typically be something where you keep coming back to the moving average on a regular basis. It doesn't surge away. It has a more of a wave type of a look to it. And it never really gets outside of its real of its channel necessarily. It's more of an orderly up move and then an orderly pullback. These can go on for a long, long time. All right. Now, if we work into a situation where we've been doing the uh, sequential wave and then all of a sudden we have this channel in place, and we break from the channel and we start surging to the upside. Well, in this case, now we have to alter, even though the moving averages are going to be slow, we have to kind of alter the trend line channel and realize that we're now in a surging market phase. And we have to treat it a little bit differently. Now we can't really trade off the weekly. Like the weekly time frame has really been the time frame. If you go and you look, look at all the opportunities we had here, 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 here. And then on the way down, another rally here, failure, and then in the zone here, another one here. And then we turned back around, found support here, actually overran a little bit, but more of a weekly pullback into support um, in this situation. But then we've surged. We haven't come back to test. So what do we do? You can't really trade um, off this index. Like, and I'm, I'm treating this as if this were a stock or something like this. So if you're looking for an entry, and let's say this is XYZ stock, you want to use the daily now. And the reason is, is that you're getting entries on the weekly, on the daily. You see how you're getting pullbacks on this time frame? Just like we were on the weekly back here, 
On the daily now, we are getting these same signals with positive momentum characteristics. You want to be playing pullbacks in this time frame. So you have to be, if you want to play the SPY right now, at least using my approach, you have to be playing it off the daily using your hourly for timing. You can't really play it off the weekly right now because we're not getting entries. All right. So you, you got to realize that now if you start looking at individual stocks, there's plenty of stocks that are still pulling back to their 18 um, week line and giving you entries. All right. Now, maybe not in technology, but there, there's definitely um, in different areas and, and other areas that are showing pretty nice strength. So um, I just want to make sure you understand that right now, the controlling time frame on the S&P is the daily chart. The reason is, is that this is the 18 that matters. This is the one that keeps showing. And, and my subscribers know because of the last two or three weeks, I've been saying the key is watching for this line to roll. If we get a break of this line and it rolls over, then you should assume this move is over for now. All right. And it's probably going to get, you know, a little violent in the pullback and it's probably going to come back and test this 18 week, which is, there's a lot of room now between where price is and where the 18 week is. Um, even on this chart here, we're talking about uh, f almost 500 versus 460. I mean, that's a pretty big um, that is a, a pretty big drop. Uh, from what I can see. So you've got this open air, you know, you've got some risk. Now the momentum characteristics are suggesting that if we do come back, that this area is probably going to hold. But because we have such a big distance here, we have more risk in place. So we got to be a little bit more careful now, especially if you're looking to be, um, if you've been late to the party and you really haven't played and you've been waiting for a lot of confirmation, you got to be very careful about adding new positions right now. I just think there's a little bit more risk in a pullback, especially if you're doing more trading oriented positions. You can probably find some stocks on a longer term basis that are closer to their 18 week and closer to the 18 month that are showing improvement. But be very careful about chasing stocks right now. I just think it's a little bit more dangerous, especially if we do hit that 5000 bogey and we might breach it for a little bit. But then be on the lookout for signs of distribution after that happens. All right, that's the update for the week. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.